The editing of a photograph is sacred. It's probably one of the most well-kept secrets of a photographer and their own workflow. It is a constant struggle for all photographers and all creators, and regardless of how good you are, how long you've been doing this for, we all go through the same question. How do we make the photo look more like film? I've been taking photos for years now, and I've spent hundreds of dollars, if not close to a thousand dollars, on uh, film emulation tools. And I've shot close to about a thousand rolls of film over these years as well. And honestly, I myself haven't still answered that question yet of how do we edit photos or digital photos like film. So in this video, I will share a couple of my secrets on how I make my photos look somewhat like film. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to everyone that watched the previous video. It did much better than I thought, and there are a lot of new people here, so I wanted to say thank you. And honestly, I'm pretty hyped that there are a lot of new people watching, so thank you very much. With these kinds of videos, people usually try to sell you LUTs. I personally don't have the confidence in me that I can make a LUT that uh, people will be happy with for a very long time, so I haven't done that. So yeah, I'm not selling you uh, my LUT or anything, don't worry. On the other hand though, um, I am doing a print sale right now. Uh, go check out my website. If you're interested, please let me know, email me, and that's a way to support the channel if you're interested in doing that. No pressure though, no pressure. In this video, I wanted to walk you through two ways that I edit my photos usually. One is a more subtle way, which I do usually when I like the photo more, when I think the photograph has more uh, substance in it. And the second one that's a little bit more vibey, and I go pretty hard on the edit. Um, and so we'll go, we'll go through both of these uh, methods that I take, and let's dive right into Lightroom because I can't use anything else because I'm stupid. Okay, let's get my cyber terrorist glasses on and let's start. So again, let's start off with the more subtle image here. I have an image that I really, really like that I took in Sydney and I think it's a pretty good photo. So this photo is taken on the GR3X in Sydney during broad daylight. But I'm looking at this photo and I think it's a very modern photo. I want to kind of gritty it up just a bit without losing its kind of modern feel to it. I think exposure wise, I wanna keep it pretty simple. So I'm kind of playing around with the tone curve right now because I think the photo itself looks pretty good already. I want to bring down the blacks because this photo is very much about these kind of modern shapes floating around. So just very quickly, what I was doing was I just made some very basic adjustments I cropped the photo to get rid of some of the noise that I didn't like, and I was playing around, tinkering around with the tone curve. But what I think I can do here is, uh, let's play with the vibrance a bit, and maybe let's play with the whites because they're popping up just a bit too much. The photo is looking a bit cold, so what we can do is I can warm it up a bit. Usually film has a warmer tone to it. And these days, what I also like doing is I go actually into the grading tool and make, this is, it's gonna be really subtle, but I like to tune in a very slight orangey tone in the highlights, very subtle. Okay, and then what I do is I bump up the green. And actually with the Lightroom grain, you can go pretty high on the parameters. 
and then you finally have an image that looks like it has some grain. Starting to look really good uh, before after. Yeah, has a bit more life in it. And lastly, if you want to take it a bit further, I also like introducing just a tad bit of red in the shadows. Balance it out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, if I was to really, really uh, fiddle with it, I might do a bit more. But with this image, I think it already looks pretty good and there's really not much to do, honestly. Um, nice. I like that. Okay, let's get on with the next one. Okay, this next photo I've taken with the Canon G7X Mark II and O2, uh, their previous video. Let's go check that one out. So let's dive into this photo. It honestly looks really good already. It's a pretty nice photo and the colors are really nice on this. So again, maybe I want to go a bit subtle. Let's see what will happen if we just simply copy and paste uh, the edits from the previous photo. I like doing that because it gives me a starting point. But if it's too much, then you know I can dial it back down. So I like using it again as a starting point. Okay, I don't not like what it has done, but I think it's a bit too hot. There is this coolness to the image that I really liked. So cool it down a bit with the white balance. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, there we go. Yeah, that's working. And then I might turn off actually the reds. Yeah, the reason being, um, we already have the red here and then the yellow here and the woman's kind of skin tones here. And what you want to be careful of is if you introduce too many uh, reds in the other parts of the frame, then you kind of miss out on how much punch and contrast uh, these reds and these yellows have. So be careful there. So maybe I want to dial this back too. Just a tad bit. Okay, that's starting to look good. I think the contrast is a bit too much, so I will, yeah, just back up. And now you get to see this lady's face just a bit more, which I like. Uh, and I might want to bring the whites up here just a bit. That looks tight. Uh, I like so, just because I want this to pop a bit more. And there we go, second photo amazing with the G7X Mark II and you know the previous video I said uh, looks like film that's exactly what I meant like this just straight out of the camera it looked really good like, I really didn't do much see I just barely I barely did anything didn't even crop it um, and the photo looks amazing the colors look on point so okay so moving on let's go to the juicy stuff So with the juicy stuff, these days I'm using this tool called Dehancer. Dehancer is uh, kind of a film emulation tool that you can buy online. And let's be clear here, there are a lot of uh, these film kind of LUTs or filters that you can buy online. I've tried so many, I've honestly wasted my money on so many of these things just to test it out. And this is why I'm bringing, up, bringing this up in this video. Dehancer. I think does it the best. They're really good. I've been testing it out recently and it's really good. So, so let's try to kind of uh, dive into it. So the great thing with an image like this, um, sorry, it's a bit dark. Let's brighten it up a bit. The great thing about an image like this, you have so much leeway to play around because it's more about the shapes and the form and it's a little bit more abstract. So let's get funky with it in Dehancer. I'll uh, go to edit in Dehancer. Uh, so Dehancer opened here, activated. Um, there are a shit ton of film types they can uh, play around with. You know what? I'm getting kind of a filmic cinematic vibe. I hate that word, cinematic vibe with this photo. So, oh, you know, just for the sake of the video, you know, don't, don't crucify me. Let's just play around with it, right? And I'll show you what the enhancer can do. And then what I do is I would look around some of the film profiles that are available in Dehancer and see what kind of fits the mood best. Oh, that looks good. Again, with this image, you have so much leeway to play around with uh, just because it's a bit more abstract and there are more uh, shadows and highlights. So as a viewer of the image, you don't really 
uh, it's really hard to tell, you know, how much the photographer played around with in post. Oh man, these these all look pretty good, huh? I like the Kodak Vision in general. So let's go with Kodak Vision with this tungsten light, maybe. And play with the push pull to see what kind of color I like the most. I like this kind of blue vibe going on, huh? And with Dehancer, there are a lot of kind of toolkits you can play around with on the right side. Um, and you also have these kind of general parameters around exposure and temperature compensation and whatnot. I shot this photo dark intentionally and then I'm brightening it up in post. And the reason is because I wanted to keep the shadows just pure black um, and bring the highlights up in post, which is what I'm doing. But I want to bring up the highlights so that those black shadows don't start uh, washing away. So with expand, you can play around with the black point and the white point, which is actually quite uh, useful in this case. Yeah, let's bring the white point up just a bit. So we have this glare. Okay, yeah, that looks good. And then I'm also noticing that I like the colors and I want to enhance it a little bit more. Uh, let's bring the up the color density and the tonal contrast. With Dehancer, there's just so much stuff you can do. I've only been using it for about a month, so I'm also still learning. 30% of the time, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm playing around uh, with the, the gauges or the parameters and I'm visually uh, noting what I like and what I don't like. And I would say about Dehancer, this is probably the best thing in Dehancer is the film grain, the halation, and the bloom. As I mentioned in my previous video, film characteristics in general, they tend to kind of hover around these things. It's about the imperfections of the lens or kind of the colors that the film provide. And with Dehancer and these tools, like you're really allowed to kind of dial those in as you like. You see the film grain just is so nice. And also um, this is the halation off. And this is it on. So you can see that kind of blooming red effect here. And then also have the bloom on, turn it off. That's solid, but with the bloom on, it looks a little bit more filmy, doesn't it? And that brings us back to Lightroom. I'm so grateful for this tool. Before, after. Before, after. That is amazing. Also, a quick interruption. Uh, there will be an affiliate link down below for the Dehancer tool. Also, the D guys over at Dehancer has let me know that they've launched an iPhone app, uh, which allows you to edit photos, probably like film. Sorry, I haven't tested it myself, but I'll go do that uh, right after this video. Uh, go check it out if you're interested. And yeah, back to the video. Next one, let's continue with Dehancer and do something different. Now we have this photo, it's more of a landscape shot. Again, edit, uh, dehancer. I mean that, ooh, I mean that color looks fucking amazing too. This photo was taken in Hokkaido in the highest mountain there, like 2200 uh, meters snowshoeing. Uh, this is shot with the Hasselblad X132. So, I love, I love this color shot. I love the edit uh, that I used for the previous photo. But let's go back to the original and, and s stick with the plan because this is what I wanted to do. Um, let's go to black and white, huh? Not, now you know where I'm going with this. Neopan, ooh, that's sick. That is really good. I'm gonna stick with HP5 because um, I really like that film uh, and I used it a lot uh, personally. So that already looks pretty good. What I wanna do here is I wanna tighten the blacks a bit more and uh, bring the highlights down just a bit. So let's kind of compress the contrast here. And then with expand, yeah, let's bring the black point down. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. See with, you know, obviously with black and white uh, and film, although this is not film, you know, it's a lot about the contrast. So just let's try to dial the contrast correctly. Again, I want to make the snowy mountain really white, but not blown out. And we're fighting this very delicate line. Okay, let's add some grain again. Uh, that looks like a bit too much. I feel like the grain uh, was already, it was a pretty gritty image already. So let's kind of dial the grain back down. Uh, but I want to include halation. 
and some bloom because I want to make it a little bit more abstract. Let's bring it down just a bit. I think the whites are a little bit too blown out. So let's dial that back down just a bit, I guess. Okay, yeah, that, that looks sick. Okay, see what I mean? Before, after. That is sick. If you're a long-term subscriber, you know that my emotions don't really go up and down like this much. Hence, uh, I think you may know that I'm actually pretty hyped with this. Let's get on with the next photo. It's a self-portrait. Beautiful. Who is this man? Beautiful. I uh, don't know how to use the camera, so I underexposed a lot. It's hard when you're taking your own photos. But uh, this, you know, this was also shot on the X1D2. So the colors, gotta say, they look pretty fucking amazing already. Uh, I don't want, I like this dark image, so I don't want to like overdo it. So let's bring up the shadows just a bit. And that'll give us a little bit of leeway to play around in post. And then I can go into Dehancer. So let's edit in Dehancer. I, I don't, I've, I've never edited this photo. I just, so I look the same, right? Do you know why? It's because I just took <gasps> this photo. So like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. And I don't know about the direction we're heading towards, but let's kind of play around a bit. Okay, but maybe this is a great way of showing what Dehancer can do without messing up your image too much. So let's go with a natural looking film profile here. Kodak, Portra, of course. Of course looks natural. Portra for life, baby. I think Portra is the way to go. Okay, yeah, I love that dark, ooh, moody. Why are my freckles like enhanced as shit? Okay, and I want to open up, again, I want to open up the photo a bit. Exposure comp. There we go. Print. Exposure. Tonal comp. Yeah, there we go. Print. Let's, let's run the contrast here. Film grain. You know, I want to kind of grainy it up a bit here. Let's do that. Yeah, I don't want halation in here. Maybe I want some bloom and let's have a slight vignette i want to bring the color oh there we go yeah i want to bring the colors in the background up a bit more and in my skin tone yeah that looks good bump the contrast let's bump the exposure and that's starting to look really good you know what yeah what else can we do let's bring the bloom up and halate it just a bit Okay, and I think we can go back to Lightroom with this image. So before, after, wow, yeah, that's a big difference. And then, because I wanna make myself look really good. <laughs> Let's play around with it just a bit. Lightroom has this new powerful tool where you can create a mask on your subject, which is moi this time. And uh, let's bring up the exposure of me here because what I wanna do so I want to do that, and then I will bring down the global exposure. That's looking really nice. And let's around, mess around with the tone curves just a bit more. Uh, bring just a little bit more lightness on my face. Yeah, and then we'll bring this down. Okay, I think, you know what? I think that looks pretty good. Before, after, before after and if you look at it closely you know dehancer is doing a lot of different things here obviously the grain but the halation and the bloom what it's doing is it you know you see these white kind of bokeh bubbles here it has different colors added to it which is really nice and that's i think f a lot of film characteristics come with that kind of randomness to it because it has a physicality to it and um yeah with digital stuff as you can see you know it's beautiful but like you don't have these random elements to it. Nice. I like that a lot.
So everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, leave a like and please comment below on what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Uh, thank you very much and goodbye, Saranara. Bye.